Hi, my name is Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with Avinash Kaushik, who is a digital, market, digital marketing evangelist for Google, also the author of the book Web Analytics 2.0, and the author of a blog called Occam's Razor. Welcome, Avinash. Thank you, Greg. So, Avinash, the world is awash with data. You meet up with executive CEOs all the time who uh, are finding themselves inundated with, with data. Um, and you've made the point that accessing data isn't really the problem anymore. It's, it's really about figuring out ways to use this data. Can you talk a little more about kind of the, the, the cultural or the institutional barriers to really uh, making best use of, of the data that companies have access to? Right, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a great uh, question. Um, I, I do find that, that we have uh, more access to data than ever before, and then this um, incredibly you know, hockey stick trend will continue, and, and a lot of access to this data is free. So you're, you're just going to get lots and lots of data. Uh, and I found a, a, a few years ago in my practice of data that just having access to data was not a strategic advantage anymore. And s over the last few years, the thing that I have noticed is having the ability to throw amazing tools and analytical strategies on top of the data isn't a strategic advantage anymore either because it is basically very democratized. So uh, everybody has access to R. Everybody can play with all kinds of tools. Uh, there's 1% case where you might not have a tool or you might have to develop something custom. But for the most part, having access to data and having a, uh, analytical strategies or tools to deploy on top of the data is an advantage anymore. Um, what, what, what that meant is we have to figure out how to solve the really important problem of what happens once we are done with our analysis and, and, and all the work. Um, and so um, at Google, we've developed this, this model. Um, I call it the care to impact model. Um, so, so far in the evolution of analysts, we were all in the business of providing data, a summarized clusters of, of insights. Uh, they could be in English or they could be a series of graphs. And we would kind of say, done, happy birthday, I'm done. Um, but um, we've changed the role to say, well, that's just getting a business person to lean in because we've told them why they should care. Mm -hmm. The only problem data has solved is why you should care. And we've, we've morphed the role of the analyst to say, and it is also your job to go figure out what the, 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 your boss, the team, should do. So once you find these insights, so what? What should we do? And that has required a fundamental rethinking of the analyst role, fundamental rethinking of the amount of time spent by the analyst on data itself. So we had to get analysts trained or hired uh, who have more understanding of business, business strategy, industry ecosystems, and all kinds of things. So they can look at data, find a trend and pattern, and be able to confidently recommend and say, and you should do X and Y. And, and that's not the end point either. There's one more thing to do. If you do X or Y, what's the business impact? That could be a brand impact, that could be a performance impact, that could be a short-term impact, that could be a long-term impact. So we, we, uh, we have changed the practice of analysis to make sure they covers care, do, and impact. Tell people why they should care. That's all the data jockeying we do with Hadoops and everything else that we do with big and small data. Then have the competency to be able to say what the business should do, and then the skills required to predict impact on the business. And, and every time we go in and deploy a care to impact model, it fundamentally changes the purpose of data inside a company. It changes the influence that an analyst can bring with them to their job um, and has a very positive trajectory on the person's career, the analyst's career, because they're solving fundamental business problems. Now, marketing, of course, is one area where data has been uh, utilized most aggressively in, in recent times. And yet, I think you've made the point that uh, marketers get it all wrong. <laughs> in other words, the way in which they think about making an impact and uh, evaluating their audiences is, is misguided. Uh, how is it that they could rethink the, the audiences that they're trying to reach? Absolutely, you know, that's, a, that's a great observation. I think, I think one challenge I run into is, is purpose. So purpose of a digital strategy, purpose of a business strategy, and the, and the limitations come both from 
uh, the possibilities that a company or a marketer can imagine. Most marketer will say, um, I sell um, shirts or I'm in the business of turning out more people to vote. There you go, two, two interesting purposes. Um, but that just solves for 2% of the possibilities with digital. So one of the things I, I encourage marketers to do is, um, I, have, I have a business framework called See, Think, Do, and Care. And the, all it does is expands the number of possibilities for what a marketer can do for the business. So that's one way to expand the possibilities. The second way, of course, that's, that's really, really important um, for us to understand um, our audiences is to pivot on intent. One of, the, one, of the, one of the big challenges that we've grown up as marketers is we always think everything in a funnel or we think everything in demographics and psychographics. So they'll say, oh, this is a person of X age with Y income with Z children. And, and at the moment, you don't need to rely on those primitive, uh, less strong signals because on the web, at least, uh, mobile apps, desktop apps, all kinds of digital existences, we have access to your intent. So we can segment all the way down to one. That's exactly right. You can go down to an audience of one, and from their expressed behavior, you can draw out intent, which means you don't need to worry if it's a man or a woman. You don't need to worry if they have X or Y children. You don't need to worry if they are Z or Q genders. You don't need to worry about those things. You say, Greg is expressing this intent, and it's an audience of one. What is the best piece of content for Greg at the moment? And that just revolutionizes marketing because it allows you to do a lot more than just pimp. And, and so I'm very, very excited about these two developments because it opens a vast new landscape of opportunity for marketers. And we can do it through expressed behavior, one of the strongest signals that we can find uh, across all kinds of marketing channels on the planet. Well, thanks, Avinash. Of course, absolutely. Mm -hmm.